Welcome to our service this morning. If you're a regular with us at our premises in Bridge Street, know that you are missed and we look forward to when it is safe for us to return to worship together as a gathered people. If you're listening to this broadcast but either worship somewhere else or don't usually attend a place of worship, you're especially welcome. If we can do anything to help you at this time, please leave us a little message or contact us by our email address, cumber.methodist at outlook.com. I hope you've had a good week. My week's been a bit of a muddle. I think the lockdown is starting to confuse my brain. And on many occasions this week, I've had to ask someone else in the family, what day is it today? But isn't it great to know that regardless of how we feel, that God is still on his throne and in control of all things. Although this is the first Sunday in the month, we will not be sharing in communion until next week. Why we continue to meet like this, our communion service will be changed to the second Sunday of the month. So if you would like to participate in that act of communion next week, please have your wine or juice, your bread or cracker, whatever you have, prepared for the start of our service at 10.30 next Sunday morning. This morning, as we come to worship, we hear the first two verses of Psalm 91. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. Let us pray. Sheltering God, thank you for your promises of protection and love. Thank you that those who walk closely with you have no need to fear because you are our refuge and shield, our gentle sheltering, protective armour, promise of salvation, a swift answer when we call. Teach me, Lord, to dwell with you, to stay close to you so that I'm always walking in your shadow. And should I stray, Lord, lead me back to that intimate place, we pray. Amen. We continue our worship this morning as we join together in a wonderful Wesley hymn. Let us sing together.
first Bible reading this morning is from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 6, verses 8 to 23. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. When the king of Aram was at war with Israel, he would confer with his officers and say, We will mobilise our forces at such and such a place. But immediately, Elisha, the man of God, would warn the king of Israel, Do not go near that place, for the Arameans are planning to mobilise their troops there. So the king of Israel would send word to the place indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elisha warned the king, so that he would be on the alert there. The king of Aram became very upset over this. He called his officers together and demanded, Which of you is the traitor? Who has been informing the king of Israel of my plans? It's not us, my lord the king, one of the officers replied. Elisha, the prophet in Israel, tells the king of Israel, even when you speak in the privacy of your bedroom. Go and find out where he is, the king commanded, so I can send troops to seize him. And the report came back. Elisha is at Dotham. So one night, King of Aram sent a great army with many chariots and horses to surround the city. When the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what will we do? The young man cried to Elisha. Don't be afraid, Elisha told him, for there are more on our side than on theirs. Then Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw that the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. As the Aramean army advanced towards him, Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, please make them blind. So the Lord struck them with blindness as Elisha had asked. When Elisha went out and told them, you have come, you have come the wrong way. This isn't the right city. Follow me and I will take you to the man you are looking for. And he led them to the city of Samaria. As soon as they had entered Samaria, Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, now open their eyes and let them see. So the Lord opened their eyes and they discovered that they were in the middle of Samaria. When the king of Israel saw them, he shouted to Elisha, My father, should I kill them? Should I kill them? Of course not, Elisha replied. Do we kill prisoners of war? Give them food and drink and send them home again to their master. So the king made a great feast for them and then sent them home to the master. After that, the Aramean readers stayed away from the land of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue our worship now by singing the beautiful hymn, Behold Our King, before Daniel brings to us the second reading. Can 
Our second reading is from Revelation chapter 5, verses 11 to 14. Then I looked again, and I heard the voices of thousands and millions of angels around the throne, and of the living beings and the elders. And they sang in, in a mighty chorus, Worthy is the Lamb who was slaughtered, to receive power and riches, and wisdom and strength, and honour and glory, and blessing. And then I heard, every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, they sang. Blessing and honour and glory and power belong to the one sitting on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. And the four living beings said Amen, and the twenty-four elders fell down and worshipped the Lamb. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue to remember the Lindsay family in our prayers as their grief continues after the sudden death of Jack. As I was preparing for this morning's service, I received an email of thanks from Kirk on behalf of the rest of the family. And I'd like to read that to you now. It says, Audrey and the extended Lindsay family would like to convey their sincere thanks for the support they received since Jack's sudden passing. We have been overwhelmed by the messages of condolence and we take great comfort knowing that we continue to be in your thoughts and prayers.
I'd like to start by sharing with you an interpretation of Psalm 91, which is taken from a book by Pat Marsh, Dwelling in the Psalms. God will protect all who dwell in him. His shadow will fall on them and be a place of rest. They will have nothing to fear, either by day or by night. No evil will harm them. He will shelter them with the gentle wings of a bird. Protect them with the shield of a mighty warrior. He will charge his angels to care for them. He will answer their prayers. And with long life and salvation, he will reward them. God will bless and protect all who dwell in him. Many of us at this time are scared of catching the coronavirus, especially if we are elderly or have underlying health problems. There is for some of us the fear that we may have underlying health problems we don't know about. If we do catch the virus, then there is the fear we may end up in hospital and in intensive care, surrounded by masked strangers. There is the fear of being alone because friends and family can't visit us. We may be scared of dying alone. Then we are anxious too for loved ones in case they catch COVID-19 and we are afraid of losing them. The thought of them being on their own without us to visit, hug and kiss them and hold their hand is unbearable. The thought of not being able to say goodbye pains us too, let alone having to grieve alone. Some are struggling in the lockdown, deprived of human contact. In our readings this last week, we read in Revelation chapter 5 at verse 11. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. On Palm Sunday, we sang the hymn, Ride on, ride on in majesty. And verse three goes, Ride on, ride on in majesty. The winged squadrons of the sky look down with sad and wondering eyes to see the approaching sacrifice. I get the Methodist Recorder, the Methodist newspaper of British Methodism. In it in recent weeks, there has been some discussion over Psalm 91. And verses 10 to 11 read. Then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. The reading in Revelation, the Palm Sunday hymn, and the discussion in the Methodist recorder all reminded me of the story that we have just heard read in the second book of Kings. Elisha's servant got up in the morning and found that the town of Dothan was surrounded by Syrian troops. He must have been terrified. Don't be afraid, says Elisha. There are more troops on our side than theirs. Then Elisha prayed to God to open his servant's eyes. Elisha's servant's eyes were opened and he saw the hill was covered with fiery horses and flaming chariots all around Elisha. Elisha and his servant were not alone. The heavenly host of God surrounded them. 
we must not forget that in this world of things we can see, there are things unseen. God has his own army of angels, the heavenly host. He is, after all, the Lord of hosts. We may not be able to see them, but they are there in countless numbers. We read in Revelation chapter 5 about the multitudes of angels with God who worship and serve him. When we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, we say, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. God made the angels. There is no need for us to be scared or afraid. We are surrounded by a heavenly host. Angels play a big part in the New Testament and in the Old Testament too, but not much is written or known about them except that they are God's messengers. Even though there are a multitude of angels, we only know a few of their names. We know the Archangel Michael and the Angel Gabriel, but they are just two. There are people who have stories to tell of encounters with angels. Often it is said that small children can see angels and talk to them. I remember my mother telling of my brother as a tiny tot, standing at the end of his cot, having a long conversation with someone he could see, but she couldn't. From his expressions and the tone of the conversation, she assumes it was his guardian angel he was speaking to. There may be times in your life when you have cried out to God and angels have been sent to help you though you may not have known they were angels. Psalm 91 says that God will command his angels to protect you. The Reverend Gordon Webb wrote in the Methodist Recorder of April the 17th, warning that even though some may find great comfort in this psalm, we are not to take it too literally. He referred to the book the Christian Agnostic, written by the Reverend Dr. Leslie Weatherhead, who describes how during the dark days of World War II, people read this psalm, a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you, and supposed they and their families would be spared the blitz. When they were not, they lost not only home and possessions, and even family. They lost their faith as well. But why does God let these things happen? Why didn't God protect the doctors and nurses who died while fulfilling their ministry of healing, looking after the people with COVID-19? Why does God let disasters happen? Why? There is no easy answer. Only he is our Heavenly Father and we are his children. He loves us. As a parent, I speak from experience and as any parent knows, you cannot wrap your children in cotton wool. You can teach them what is good and what is bad. But when, but then, you have to let them go and go out and experience the world for themselves. But you are always there to pick up the pieces when things go wrong. You can't stop your children from falling and hurting themselves. You can't stop them from becoming ill, from falling off their bicycle and when they're older from crashing the car or from being heartbroken. But you can be there when they cry for help. I imagine it's the same for God. He gives us the free will to learn, grow, 
make mistakes and make our own way in the world. He is always there when we cry for help. Any parent will know that your ch what your child wants and what they need can be very can be two very different things. So too with God, what we want and what God knows we need may be entirely different too. Psalm 91 is saying, if we walk closely with God, he will not abandon us. He will be there with us in difficult times. We may be lucky and avoid becoming ill. We may catch the coronavirus and survive or may not recover. We may lose family and friends. But one thing is certain. We have not been abandoned. We are not alone. The Lord of hosts is with us. We, our families, friends, may be physically apart, but one thing is certain. As St. Paul said in his letter to the Romans at chapter 8, verses 38 to 39, he said, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, neither anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So don't be afraid. There are more troops on our side than theirs. May your eyes be opened. We are not alone. God our Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and all the heavenly hosts of heaven are with us. Let us pray. Sheltering God, thank you for your promises of protection and love. Thank you that those who walk closely with you need have no fear. You are our refuge and shield, our gentle sheltering, protective armour, promise of salvation, a swift answer when we call. Teach me to dwell with you, Lord, to stay close to you, that I am always walking in your shadow. And should I stray, Lord, step alongside me and lead me back to that intimate place. Amen. And now our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Into the closed doors of this world, come, Lord, and speak your word of peace and life. We pray for all those who are afraid at this time. We pray for all those who are ill and for those who yearn for their health. We pray for those who are homeless and for those who struggle to feed themselves and their families. We pray for those who have lost their incomes or whose businesses are at risk. We pray for all those who offer care during this crisis, often putting their lives at risk to do so. We pray for our government and all the governments of the world, for business leaders and all who hold any power. We pray for those who feel voiceless and powerless. We pray for those situations that no longer make the headlines 
for those suffering from conflicts, war and oppression, for those seeking refuge and those who have no place of safety. We ask these and all our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. This next song that we're going to sing together reminds us of an incredible truth which is a great message for a world that seems to have descended into complete chaos. This old hymn, Jesus Shall Reign, reminds us that as the sun rises and sets in different places across the globe, the kingship of Jesus is not threatened anywhere because Jesus is king over the whole world. And he is reigning and he is just and faithful. And so it says, let every creature rise and bring blessing and honour to our King. Let's do that together as we sing this now.
we thank Sarah for all that she has brought to us this morning. And now as you go into this week, may you know that God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit journeys with you. May you experience God's peace and know the assurance of his love every day with you. Stay safe and remember if we can be of any help, please contact us throughout the week. Don't forget we join again on Monday morning for a cuppa and chat at 10.30 and pause for prayer on Wednesday at 10.30. It would be great if you could join with us for both of these. See you all throughout the week.